Good. Anybody want to yeah. Dr. Dana requested that you talk about identity. No. Oh. Identity is such a big thing these days, and people are very enthusiastic about it. And I see it as a real impediment. Yes. Well, it's the identifying, yeah. Yeah. The act of it is not the topic of it, yeah. Identifying. Well, that's a mental characteristic. So it likes to get a sense of identification from things like what you wear or what team you follow or if you're a surfer or something like that. Yes. So the head gets a sense of value because really it's coming from a lack of value, the head all the time. Yeah. It has a deficit pretty much for most people. And so it's attempting through identifying with being this and being that to get like a, a better shine, so to speak. Yeah even if it's in a small group. So if you're identified with a few people, everyone's can be getting a sort of a reflection from each other, yeah? So the head is, that's a characteristic of the head. It's not volitional. This is the thing uh, you'd like to get across more as a feeling, not as a mental idea, but there's a feeling of being the chooser, yeah? There's a feeling that it could have gone another way. And it's and the reason why it didn't is because of you in a lot of ways, yes? There's a feeling of choice. And there's a beautiful uh, reading in one of those little booklets you can, I used to get from uh, when you went to Tiruvannamalai and you'd go to Rama, Ramana Maharshi's ashram, they had a bookstore there. They'd sell these little, for like a, a rupee, yeah. in little books. And one of those books was a question answer. And we've used it a lot here because it captures the essence of what we're trying to say. And he he ran into the question, uh, what, what's, uh, you know, is it predetermined or is it free will? Yes, everyone seeing every person seems to be quite interested in that. Wow. Is it predetermination or free will? Well, I'll get back to the identifying. And he says, uh, if there's a sense of individuality, which is the prior condition necessary for the feeling that you have free will. So through the sense of individuality, what comes along with that is a sense of free will. Because if there wasn't a sense of free will, whose life would it be anyway? So to reinforce the idea that it's your life, yeah, comes with this idea of free will, and that rests on the idea of a sense of individuality. It does not say there's individuality. It says there's a sense of individuality, and that sense of individuality is produced. The head produces it. When you were a baby, you did not have a sense of individuality for quite a while, yeah? So the sense of individuality is produced, and with that in place, that sense of individuality the next move is that you believe there's free will. Now, to me, trying to convince the sense of individuality it does not have free will is pointless. It's not a, you want to bypass that. If you want to call it a spiritual bypass, you want to bypass that sense of individuality and point to it. Because if you don't see, feel the sense, or if you, you're going to feel the sense of individuality, but if you see it's not you, you'll lose interest in the topic of free will and predetermination. You will care, really. So you're saying that identity is more than a mental activity mm -hmm. of identifying an actual thing. Totally. Okay. Totally. Be again, because the head is, uh, is attempting to accrue value. Just like when people work, they've been, we've been programmed that you have to work to uh, earn that free time, yeah? So there's a lot, it's a, like a deal. It's always transactional and stuff. So we're not an inherent condition, we're an acquired condition, yeah? And then that thing plays judge and God with how you're doing. And so it may set 12 hoops to jump through, you jump through it, and then there's a 13th one and a 14th. It just continues to add more. Yes? Yes, because it's the point isn't arriving anywhere. It's the constantly attempting to arrive is the bondage of self through time. Yes? 
So the identifying is, you see it. I remember I went to a San Francisco Giant, no, San Francisco 49, a football game. A friend of mine took me there. And uh, when we got into the crowd, they made it a point to tell everyone that was sitting there that I was from New York and it was the New York Giants were playing the 49ers. So every time the 49ers were doing good, they all turned around and we're kicking your ass. And you know what I mean? We're destroying you. And I go, who's the we? They don't even know who you are. <laughs> they're not sending you a paycheck. You know, there was like this whole thing. It's they're, I'm there, you know what I mean? They're, they were associated with the football kicking ass as kicking my ass. It was very strange. But it just, okay. I don't know. I just heard a thing there. So this idea of identifying is constantly, it's almost as if it's sticking out, trying to find something to adhere to. Yeah. To adhere to. That's why we become billboards. We're wearing clothes that say billabong and fucking sports out. You know what I mean? We're selling products with the identification. So you're in the water and you surf. So now you have billabong shirts or rip curl and shit like that. That's the whole point. They're preying upon that characteristic, not of you, but of the mental. The mental is constantly looking to adhere to something. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea, the act of identifying, if you're listening to the head, it's past the point of the act of identifying. You're already that. See, this is what the head does. This is its beautiful, beautiful strategy. It doesn't have you in a position of I'm becoming self. I'm moving towards being a self. It says you already are one. So if you're listening to the narrative, almost like a bed, you know, a, a lullaby all day, like a trance, when you're hearing about you, you're already the you you're hearing about. There's no possibility of, of uh, not signing that contract. You've already signed the paper. You're Paul. And the only opportunity possibility it offers you is to get out of Paul or make it better or whatever or get some relief from Paul. But the Paul is already established. The message of non-duality is negating that. It's negating the assumed establishment the established point, and then really having very little interest in what comes after. Because if you don't see this, you're going to be looking from it. If you don't see the establishment of this idea of self, the feeling of being the doer when any doing occurs, the feeling of being the seer when seeing is happening, the, that sense of being the hero when hearing is happening, if you don't see what's going on, you're looking from it. So when you look at seeing as the seer, it's blindness to the fact that you are the seeing. Don't you get it? You've already been moved from the reality of seeing, you are seeing, to a point, a mental one of seer, and now you're trying to use seeing to realize something as the seer. Instead of letting the seeing reveal that you're not the seer, that's the realization we're looking for. We're not, you know, if you're looking for realizations as a seer, they're a dime a dozen, but they're not going to do what you hope they would do. They're not going to create a completely new dynamic that's never going to be altered. Yeah, the same old, same old is going to come in and intervene and intrude, and you're going to get fucking frustrated. Then you'll think the only thing I can I have to do more. I got to go more silent, more this and more that. And there's the slavery once again. The head enslaves you with just the subtle, the subtle movement of you from seeing to seer changes everything. Because now the seeing used as a seer is blind to the seeing. It's blind to it. You can't use the seer, right, to find the seeing because you are the seeing. You see it? That's an identity. That's a movement of identity. There's a slight movement. You have now identified as the noun, the seer, and that which is seeing is still seeing. And now, in a weird way, the noun tries to use what's looking to look for it. That's the fundamental little Chinese thumb torture of non duality. And non duality. 
then word non means not and duality is two. So the not doesn't matter. That's the movement of negation and understanding of duality is helpful. So you can recognize duality is not what's going on. It's not two. Yeah. It's not telling you what is because you are that. Yeah. I feel people do a dis an injustice to us when they try to describe the indescribable. Just fucking leave it as the indescribable. Let's describe the describable. You can describe what you're not. You can describe how the head works because you're seeing it. Yeah. You are not the play character in the play. You are more the audience. Yeah. You're seeing the play. Now you may be living as if you're completely in the play, but in fact, you're seeing the play. That's the establishment of reality is seeing. Now you can believe you're the seer as much as you want. You can huff and puff maybe for 80 years, 80 something years. And it comes to an end every night you go to sleep in deep sleep, the seer is gone and you get reamped to become the seer again the rest of the next day, but it runs out. Why? Because it's a finite, finite activity in a field of infinite, yeah? You can't lose. Yeah, the tiger, your head is in the tiger's mouth already. It's a done deal. Yeah, the beautiful thing is you don't have to unbecome, unbecome, be, 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 be. That was weird. That was weird. <clears throat> what happened there? What happened there? Um, um, Why? Someone had, someone had, someone had, someone had, yeah, maybe turn it off. All right. That, I muted it. It was Jerry. Yes, I muted it. All right. Great. Great. That's good. Hearing me once is enough. You know, I hear twice. Jesus. So it's it's the seeing. It's the awareness of the manufacturing of the seeing. That's what you see. The mental state's product, its first product, is a sense of self. And that sense of self is pictured as a body, but that's what it really represents is the doer, the thinker, the feeler, the taster, the toucher, the winner, the loser, the one who has a life, the one who has an ego, the one that loses the ego. That's the sense of self. How it's remembered, you're not remembered as the doer, you're remembered as a, the doer as the body. So the body becomes the image that it can keep going back to to refer to you as the doer and the thinker. And the whole dilemma with thinking is the thinker, really. People want to change their thoughts. Good luck. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. They're all wild goose chases. Just see the thought because it is a thought and that thought is the idea of being the thinker. It's a thought that has seemingly raised above other thoughts. It hasn't, it's just another thought, but it, it claims to be the thinker of all the other thoughts. It's like Dracula going on vampire hunts to disguise itself, yes, as the biggest vampire. So it's looking, I've, the thoughts are driving me crazy. No, the thinker, the, the thoughts facilitate the driven crazy. It's the thinker that opens the door. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen it. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it in the getting whipped by it. And I've seen it from the relief. Yeah. I saw it by being up for 10 straight days on cocaine, just totally fucked. And just having it bore new assholes all over me and not dying and not being able to go to sleep. And it made no sense until something else occurred later on. And I saw the ferocity of the mental activity. I felt I saw it from the nose to tail. Yeah. And that's the really the act of being identified as. The act of being, I, I, being identified as the main Toxin in that is historical. You feel like you're something already. Yeah. You don't start with, I feel like I'm spirit. You start like, I feel like a body wanting to become spiritual. Yeah. This doesn't go to that second point because the first point's the more important one. The belief that you're something that you're not. If you question that, you may find out that you are what you're looking for. Now, 
yeah and that there's no requirements or conditions that you need to meet except the ones you've made up and once you lose interest in those false requirements the immediacy of this message is so fucking obvious yeah it's not like you've lost it and come back to it you never leave this is the beautiful thing i had this re this uh, adventure once in australia it was a lot of situations that brought me there, but it was like an eight day sort of like therapeutic, different type of retreat because I was over with meditation retreats. Yeah, I realized that wasn't working. So I thought, all right, this place is going to be emotional breakthroughs. And and they they knew how to produce cathartic events. They did. They were incredible, really. So I didn't know anyone who was running it. I didn't know any of the participants, but they all came out of a Rajneesh group, you know, Osha, Rajneesh Osha. So there I was eight days and the fifth day, actually the third day they start having, they'd have these meetings in the afternoon. They clear the room, put mattresses, they had a DJ and they'd start playing music and people would just erupt into conditions. And they'd have these people around the circumference of the room, never said anything, just held the space. And people were just going off, going into hell. And so this one day, it was like the sixth day I went to this thing and I was like chanting, I can never get back. I can never get back. And I was crying, you know, like I really fucked up. I split from the Godhead or something. I mean, I was going off and they were like, they took me out, almost carried me out the awakened one and i'm not crying and everything and then two weeks later i realized why i could never get back because i never left <laughs> which had no romantic quality to it <laughs> it was no herculean task and you know having the adoration of everyone it was just you never left bro <laughs> and i had a lot of story about trying to get back yeah but I had never left. It was beautiful. It didn't take any time. It squashed the whole thing. Space and time just were like that. And then you got a taste of what actually is, which is not of space and time. Yeah, just like that. And uh, my spiritual career came to a screeching halt <laughs> after that week. It did, really. Because the gig was up. You could just see something. You, what are you going to do? You know, you just let the pants fall down and you get used to walking around without a belt, spiritual belt. You're just walking around and then more shit could land because you are actually here and you weren't a moving target. Because there's a movement in all of us. The mental state is agitated by nature. It's not at rest. It's agitated. Yeah, and we have it in recovery where the agitation, we call it irritable restlessness and discontent, becomes a, a vague malaise, but very, very pronounced. You're feeling like you want to get out of your own skin and you'll do almost anything to have a momentary relief from this imagined condition. And that's what it is. It's a seeming condition. It's appearing to be true, but it's not true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so that drive... It's like you think a lot of engines have shut off, but there's some that are still humming. When they shut off, then something happens, yeah, because you're here. Yeah. And then a lot's revealed. You see blue is blue and red is red, and you know, the mountain is a mountain and stuff like that. And uh a lot of things are put to rest. They become like moot points. You're not that interested in spiritual topics. I'm not. I have absolutely. Sometimes you feel like a fraud if you were a person who could feel like a fraud. You feel like a fraud going to spiritual groups because you have no interest in it. What most spiritual groups are interested in. You're not interested. I've lost. I got zero, zero, point zero, zero signs of spirituality in me. It just was put to an end. It has never resurrected. It was so beautiful, really. It was just done. And then you're here. Yeah. And I've been wanting to get out of here since I was six, really. With any vehicle I was introduced to. Reading, you know, drugs, spirituality, back to drugs. Yeah. And then finally, I, the ghost was given up. Yeah. I'm completely here because I'm not here. 
That's the beauty of it. I can completely be here because I know I'm not here. It's so beautiful. And then the, 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 the urban renewal project was canceled. And now my attention and interest is spent here, you know, now in this moment of contact. And I get all, you know, and basically you're more of an empty uh, bookcase. I really don't know anything above any level unless I sit here and then something comes through and uses the situation. But this sitting here has no interest in it at all. I never get, I never leave a meeting with something ever. I always leave a meeting empty. It's great, really. It's gotten so used to it. <laughs> so the duality where you're, you and I are sitting would be the subject objectness of your head, yes? So sometimes you're thought about yeah, as a body, like a historical doer, yeah? Your head goes over it. And sometimes you're the thinking of it. So sometimes you, you're in the subject camp and sometimes you're in the object camp. It goes on a lot all day. Non-duality is saying you're neither of those. You're appearing as both of those and you're neither of those. It's not saying what you are. It just wants you to find out what you're not. And then, well, actually to know what you're not and then you'll find out what you are. They've tried to, non-duality wasn't here. It only came up because of duality. Yeah, this entertainment of duality needed to be uh, contested and non-duality was that contest. So non-duality is just negating what we believe to be true. That's all. It's not saying once you negate that, we're gonna show you what's true. There's no next move. It's just a negating of what you're not. And then you just find out what's happening. Yeah, there you go. It's really simple in a way. And there's no levels or grades or belts. You don't get a brown belt or a blue belt or a black belt. Uh, you don't get anything, really. No parades are thrown for you. No one even buys you coffee anymore. You know, no one... Uh, you know, it gives you the highest seat and you know, the leather chair. No, it's just, it's just basically all of that's gone. And uh, I wish, you know, it's difficult to, yeah, whatever. So there's, so as an example, a simple one would be, so there's some quality, let's call it consciousness, that we're all in, seem to be, uh, at the effect of, yeah? So we're sitting here and not wanting to or not, if the consciousness of seeing is occurring, you're gonna see whatever's happening. Yeah, so I see these mountains. I may not have wanted to see a mountain today, but if I'm looking, I see the mountain, yeah? So there's no volition really, what I'm going to see. So the seeing is happening, yeah, through the eyes. The hearing is happening through the ears. The feeling is happening through the nerves, yes? The touching, the tasting is happening through the tongue. Yeah, the touching, tasting, feeling, seeing, hearing, and then the thinking. Yeah, so these activities are being noticed. Yeah, you notice that they're seeing, don't you? So there's a seeing and you know of this golf course and there's a noticing of it. And then there's something implied that there's a you that's the seeing, yeah? What really is there before it's filled up with the idea of you is that space, yeah, of seeing, yeah? So there's the seeing and then there's the noticing of it and the head rushes in to tell you what's noticing it and it says it's Mary or it says it's Paul or it says it's Sherry or it says it's this, yeah? And then once that's accepted, then it kicks in and the narrative goes off, yeah? Now this isn't about that narrative ending, it's about seeing it's not true. Yeah, because you're not choosing for that narrative to go on. The narrative just goes on. Yeah, if you try to set out on a course to stop the narrative, that's part of the narrative. The narrative just is always including you as the doer, thinker, feeler. So you can't get out of that, which you're not in. Or there's a statement in AA we use, you have to quit playing God. Yeah, and what the head is doing is playing God. 
So when the head hears this order, you got to quit playing God, it sets out on a course to quit playing God, which is playing God. Uh, ad infinitum you see you can't get out once you're seemingly in the point is we're questioning the seemingly in we're not questioning we got to find a new way to get out we're questioning the seemingly in yeah what yeah yeah, yeah. oh we've got it yeah thank you now there's the experience of being of seemingly being in yeah, but experience isn't factual, obviously, because it's subjective. Yeah. I look at a golf course, I say, what a waste of beautiful land. A golfer looks at the golf course and it's going to be a fun day getting loaded at the 19th hole or whatever. Yeah, it's the golf course, but it's a subjective narrative that, yeah, so we have the seeing of it. But that's quickly forgotten and we move right to the narrative, which is about us. And that's why we move <laughs> to the narrative because it's sold as about us. And in Buddhism, they call it the cherishing of self. So there's a cherishing of this little story or character and the head likes it and it runs after it. Yeah. And so there's it's not like the river has been the flow of the river has been deterred or manufactured. It's going in a direction and there just needs to be a correction. When the correction is made, there was no need for the correction. But while there seems to be a problem, you need a solution. When you see the solution, there is no problem. Yeah. So the water was going any way it wanted, but in a weird way, the attention and interest seemed to be obsessed with the narrative at the expense of the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. Yes. Uh, instead of the living, we have an interpretation of the living. And then the interpretation of living becomes the dominant event instead of the living. Yeah. And you can see what it drives people to do. Yeah. People probably wouldn't come up with the idea of jumping off bridges with bungee cords unless they didn't feel like they're out of the moment. <laughs> You know what I mean? When you're seemingly in the moment, you don't think ever of a bungee cord or jumping off a bridge. You just don't. It doesn't seem, I don't have to shock myself into a, a sense of being here. <laughs> but if the interpretation is followed completely, that's what happens. Eh? Yeah. So we're not talking about you have to change the thinking. We're just asking you to look, is there a thinker? And if there isn't a thinker, there'll be a loss of interest in the thinking. And then the thinking won't be seemingly bothering you as much as when they're your thoughts. Yeah. The thinking will be, you know, grazing over there. They're not intruding on your little patch of grazing. And you can cohabitate the space. Instead of my thoughts, it seems like everything else is fucking pushed out and it's just completely, they're all surrounding you. Yeah. But thoughts are different. Yeah. It's just a simple little word of extraction, M-Y. It's not asking for much. Just see, because the importance of a problem isn't the problem, it's the my. The importance of a thought isn't the thought, it's the my thought. The importance of a feeling is not the feeling, it's my feeling. That's where the meaning is being given from, yeah? And if you're not liking the meaning, go to the distribution point and see if that's you. If it's not you, you'll lose interest in that distribution. And where you used to be going to that ball all the time, you'll be not going for the ball. You'll see it, but you won't be following it anymore. So you'll see the presentation of the story, but the story will not grab all your attention. You'll be here. The story is myopic. You'll get into the panoramic. From the myopic, it doesn't like the idea of a panoramic. From the panoramic, the myopic is included. Yeah. So while you're seeing like this, you see the story instead of the story taking up all the space and then you're looking for fucking exits and escapes. But now you see, you really see you're not in it. Yeah. You don't have to become a master of getting out because it fails. 
the constant trying to get out, they all turn into addictive activities. Spirituality sometimes turns into an addictive activity. Sometimes people do not believe they have a good day if they miss their morning med meditation. Tell me that meditation isn't being used for something. Yeah. When you were a kid, did you have to sit quietly before you had a good day? No. You know what I mean? I didn't have to earn it. I wasn't doing squat, just wanted to play. I didn't ask my mother, hey, Ma, tell me how I'm playing. Am I doing pretty good? I think Wayne's having more fun than I am. None of that was going on. You were just here, yeah? The head developed and look at where it brought us, yeah? And now we're trying to get back with the head when where it brought us is only seemingly so. This is the trap. The trap is not being in, it's trying to get out. That is the trap. The biggest in is getting out. And this is what non-duality negates. You don't try to get out of what you're not in and you don't try to get into what you're not out of. It's just that simple. Yeah. Go ahead, hon. So because I'm here, does that mean I'm trying to get out of something? No, it doesn't mean. It means that the head thinking it's here may be doing exactly that. But not you, but the head. I yes. Well, I hope not. <laughs> well, there you go. Then you're. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good place. That's great. It's just feels like music or something. Yeah. Great. That's that. See, after the diagnosis has been met, then you don't need the diagnosis. It's when you're ailing from it, then it's good to hear the diagnosis. If you've been relieved of it, then you're past, not past the diagnosis, but then the diagnosis is heard as music, let's say. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. But for other people, it's, there's an identification with what's being described and they start seeing something that they weren't seeing before. They start seeing that activity of the claiming, yes? Of having the life move from living to interpretation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you hear it after, in a sense, something has moved, and then it's music. If you see it before, it may sound like it's going over your head. Yeah? The message. Yes? But it's working every either way. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Because, but then, but, what? It's amazing. I got to call you later. <laughs> it was Ramana's brother, Ramana Maharshi. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful, honey, really. It's tough as anybody, but I know, you know, I mean, I'm not, it's just that I don't. I don't, you know, like I just feel like I don't. That's great. That's a very nice condition. Yeah. No, I'm seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we come here? We have no idea either. Yeah, I've never shown up at a Paul Hedeman meeting. I really haven't. Because that which wanted to know is dead now. That wanting to know about this topic was extinguished a long time ago. All the things that I thought were driving me have been put out concerning this topic. Yeah? Thinking it would make it better or whatever. All of that stuff has been... So basically, I'm here and I have absolutely no interest in it. Yeah? And it, that's a beautiful... You get used to it. It's very cool. Yeah? But a lot of people in a weird way have to work at where that is. Because they are always being moved. Their head is always going, doing something. Yes. So, yeah. So it's beautiful. You can hear this on a lot of different levels. It's nice when you hear it as music. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about this mind pattern. The what? The mind pattern. Yeah. Because one of the things that's happening is I'm trying to see what you're talking about. So there's that claiming right there. In order to get out of this uncomfortable feeling of not having, not getting it. Yes. There you go. That's stop there. 
just oh that's what's happening okay. yeah stop there that's what that's the revelation the reaction to that is something else the revelation is you just saw what it it does yeah so it's almost like just keep describing what's the, the crazy you Exactly. Because if sooner or later, if you can describe something, it's got to be not a view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're getting such a good view of it, you must be somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And its whole basic story is that whatever it's saying is you. And then it dis this undermines its basic premise. You don't have to go through every phase of trying to undo it. You don't care if it was done or is it doing. Yeah, you lose interest in it and you enjoy not knowing much. Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I did have a, a revelation that none of this tells me anything about what I am. Yes. It's just, the I am keeps coming up. And so. Well, it is, it's going to. It's keep coming up, so yeah, like, so, and then there'll be, you know, maybe they'll be holding out on hope that so, it's going to get it if yeah. you keep going, and that's going to be deadened. It is. It's going to, it's like, it's going to be suffocated underwater soon. <laughs> you know, you think you killed it, then it, its head comes up again, okay, just sink it, and then there's finally a point where it's done, really. Yeah, it is. Because it's finite. Yeah, even though it says it's going to be for a long time, it doesn't have that. It's going to lose out because you, you, you're a lot, you've been here a lot longer than it will ever be appearing. Yes? Yeah, that's why I think they say the this thing about Ramana with you're already in the tiger's mouth. You're thinking you're somewhere making a choice to maybe follow this message or not. It's already done. You're in the digestive period. You're being digested <laughs> as you're thinking. Should I have the uh, have the macaroni and and the steak? You're already digested. Yes. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? The only thing that's going keeps that going on is an interest, and there'll be a loss of interest in that activity. You cannot believe how much interest and attention has been set, sent on fool's errands. And then they're all called back, and now you're here. Yeah, and this is what you were hoping to arrive at by trying to get into the moment. Yeah? Especially the stories about all the things I screwed up in the past. Yes. And if there is a past and as if they can be undone. Yes, yes. And again, this is not about changing any of that. It's just a migration of interest from it. And I feel what keeps putting the interest towards that is the idea of like it's about you. And so if that you that it's about is weakened, your interest and attention will be freed from that bondage. And I believe that interest and attention that's used to enslave you through yesterday and tomorrow will enrich your day. It's the same energy. But now it's not being sent on a lot of these errands and it's resting, yeah? While whatever you're doing and stuff like that, it's abiding, as they use that word. There's an abiding of it. And basically it's not, the whole force isn't going out at every, at every SOS from the mental state. Yeah, your reserves are always here. Yeah, and it's just a loss of interest because it's really, truly, it's not about you. It's also a damn boring story. It's incredibly boring and no one wants to hear it except you. You've been listening to it for 40 years. Yes, see, this is called cherishing. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone that's listening to you at the dinner table is cherishing your story <laughs> you are cherishing this you not you're not but there's a cherishing of yes. the story yes this is the inner dialogue Again. yeah so there's freedom oh, yeah yeah about that. like the so in my experience seeing when you're whatever um what I can, I can see what I'm not, blessedly, you know, sort of, it, it, it just landed. But when my daughter, for example, like when I'm in a state of fear about my daughter and her addiction, then that's a place where I just, I, I don't, I can't, there's no, there must, I guess, fear, like that kind of visceral fear comes up in me as a mother or a person. And then at that point, there's no ability to kind of 
it seems like I just lose all ability, or not even ability, but. Well, with that diagnosis, then you need some skillful means not to do something stupid during that time. And just accepting that, that that's it's still not about me. There's just this. There's well, just it's this always question. not about you. Yeah. But yeah, at this point, uh, you may make a stupid thing or something like that. So you, you get skillful means to distract yourself for whatever little bit of time it takes to not get your hands on this situation. Yeah. By what you just described, that would be the suggestion. If you can't seem to get out of it, that means you believe you're in it. And if you believe you're in it, get a skillful means to lessen that time and the space there. But see, remember, when you're brought out of it, you'll realize you were never in it sooner or later. And really honor that. Yeah, not honor the skillful means, but honor what comes about when you realize you're out of that. Yeah, you get out of the fear with your daughter. And after a while, you realize you were never in it. So that's where I would make the temple. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put the, the skillful means into the temple. I would put that, the temple at that point where you realize you get a simple, like a subtle suggestion. Maybe I'm not in this. Uh, I think I just got out of it. Sometimes that help, that's how people arrive there. They get out of it and then they realize, wait a minute, you know, every time I get out of it, it feels just like I was never in it. Well, maybe I was never in it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you feel outmatched do the right thing which is to fucking get a pail of water and put, put it on the fire as we say in aa principles practice these principles in all your affairs and if you can't do that limit your affairs yeah sorry sorry I just put it on mary yeah yeah that would be my suggestion because it doesn't change the fact of what is yeah. So in your pantomime of life, you have certain places where nothing fucking works. Well, what would work there? Surrender. So you just fucking admit, hey, I'm outmatched. That will work. Yeah. And what happens is when you're relieved of the bondage, see, where, where are you brought back when you're relieved of the bondage? Not after the bondage, but before the bondage. So the real message in these situations isn't getting relief. It's seeing where that relief is on the spectrum. It's before the bondage or the discomfort. It's not after. It wasn't, the discomfort was not a reality. It was appearing to be real. When you're brought back, yeah, to that before, that's always been there. You always arrive back at the same place. Once you get relief of some, whatever it is, like money fears or let's say health fears, I got cancer or something like that. The relief doesn't come after the bondage. It's shown to be before the bondage. That's the message of the fucking relief is that the relief is before the bondage. I don't arrive there. So the skillful means are ways of arriving at what you never left. And after a time, you, the skillful means are not necessary because you arrive at where you've never left. Yeah? You're not buying a ticket anymore. Yeah? While you need to go buy a ticket far out, the, the, the course will go down and there'll be, there won't be around the world tickets. You'll be buying like a little one from San Francisco to Palm Springs. Like I talked to the lady next to us. I wish all air flights were an hour. I mean, fucking 10 hours, you know, coming from Italy, 11 hours, fucking a drag. You have one hour, all flights. So in a weird way, it's sort of like that. You get the relief and don't stop there recognize where you've been brought back is quite fucking familiar. You don't get return, you don't get brought to a new relief. You get returned to a relief that's before the discontentment and irritability. You got to have eyes to see it because then you start pledging allegiance to the fact, the fact of you of on having never left. And it then that gains traction and I'll tell you 
the needs and the moments of having to have that pail of water will decrease because the whole escapade, the whole act doesn't have to play itself out anymore because you keep seeing that you arrive back at the same place. Just like when people think they're on a train of thought and they, when they're dropped off, it's instantaneously and they're at the station constantly. The longest train of thought never takes them anywhere. When they stop, they're at a very familiar condition, which is now. Yes, that's the point. If it takes you buying a lot of train tickets and believing you left the, t the station tons of times, only to realize when you get off the train, you're right at the station, didn't take any time to get back. There you go. That's how it's going to work out. You're working yourself out of the Chinese puzzle that you made up. That's dreaming oneself out of the dreaming. The relief is before the bondage. If you give a reality to the bondage, the relief will be of the bondage. You'll be, the relief will come with a fucking price and that will be of the bondage. You'll believe it was real and you did something that was real to get out of its reality, only to be afraid that you'll be back in it and you'll have to get, do it again and get out of it. That's another addiction. But what you, what's revealed when you're out is you were never in. You never go anywhere on those trains of thoughts. You all, when it stops, you're right at the station every fucking time. Have you ever, I was lost, then you wake up. You don't, it doesn't, it's not a 30 mile journey. I was lost and then I come to, and now it's 30 miles to get, no. You're right back to where you've always been. It's like, okay. Now it's only 30, no, there's no 30 miles. I watch people go, their heads go, and it stops, and they're instantly free from it. Now this narrative kicks in, and they're not seemingly, but they are. They were, they were completely free from it. For that second, the narrative kicks in, oh, you need a local train to get close, but then you gotta meet, and there's another one who'll take you, and then you, finally you'll get back to the station. It's an addiction. We had it. We a guy who knew me from before the early, early days. We used to do it where people would believe they were so fucked up and then they would get the relief and it was like a big shot. Yeah. So to get that real joy of getting that shot, they had to have a lot of drama and crises and it became an addictive move. It's like the lady who has the necklace around her neck she thinks she lost it, thinks, yeah? She starts getting bummed out because she lost this necklace and a whole story ensues and she, she marshals all these people to join her to find the necklace and they go out searching for the necklace and they hear someone who said, I found the necklace once. And so they go to meetings about this and suddenly she, the person says, hey, just feel your neck. So the lady feels a neck, not realizing that it had never not been there. It's now she's found the necklace. It's the same thing with the relief. You're brought back to the relief, which is before everything, and you think you found the relief. But no, the necklace never went anywhere. Never went anywhere. But that's, see, when she thought she lost it, which she didn't, it was still there. She was bummed out. What is this but dreaming? You deny a fact and you go on this tangent and you're fucking bemoaning, just like when I thought I, I could never get back. I believed I had done something on some spiritual level where I separated from the Godhead. And basically, because that was so bad, I can never get back. And it sounded like a good story. A lot of mea culpas, a lot of oh, oh, oh. And, but it was completely put to the end by I had never laughed. No one wants that relief. They want to get relief. They want to have relief. But the relief, they're not in, the head's not interested in it. The head is not interested in becoming what you are. Yeah, it is interested in that. It's not interested in being what you are. It will, it will sign up for lifetimes to become something. Yes? So, yes, 
if when someone tells me I'm totally fucked up, go do service. You know what I mean? Because what's going to happen, it's going to bring you back to where you never left. And hopefully you have the eyes to see sooner or later after being brought back so many times and being greeted like in Hawaii with the flowers, the thing, the messages on having never left, you'll finally fucking get it. Yes. And in a lot of these interludes of thinking you lost the necklace and then the joy of finding it will become less and less with a lot more time in between of on based on having never left you just stay there it's not like you stay there you are there yeah and when the head goes i'm fucked okay i've lost it i left the kingdom no you haven't and then what the relief becomes an addiction yeah, because for you to have the relief, for the lady to have the joy of finding she had a belief, she lost something. Yeah, the head can't see it any other way. If I always have the necklace, what the fuck, you know? But when I lost it and I gave it so much meaning, when I find it, it's like really fucking cool. I, I'm on my Facebook thing. <gasps> oh, Community, I found, yes, I found the necklace. Thank you for all your help. Oh, no. So the loss is necessary for the find. The joy of getting out is necessary that the in was real. That's the bondage. The bond, the addiction is the getting out. The bondage is the fact that you're in something you're not. This is illusory. The head is trancing us out. It has us going ass backwards. We're trying to get out of shit we're not in, and we're trying to get into shit we're not out of. You are not the thinker of the thoughts. Yet, you believe what sits before all thoughts is the thinker. It's a thought. There is no thinker that's sitting around choosing, oh, I think I'll think a little today, just like these guys. I think I'll play nine holes today. I'm going to fuck Paul up at one in the morning. <laughs> Let's have some thoughts. No. Thoughts arise. They pop. They do whatever. Yeah. And they can either lead somewhere or not. And what's going to really be the shepherd of that herd is the thinker. The idea of being the thinker is going to bring them to a well-worn trough of obsession with self. The thoughts will now be the harbinger of the messages of the past and future. Yet it's all base. You've, you've signed up for it through the idea of the thinker. Yeah? And this is the whole point. There are thoughts, there's feelings, there's sensations, there are actions. There's not a thinker, there's not a feeler, there's not a doer. Yeah? There's not a this. That's all. That's all the presentation is. We're not saying, there's not. There's just a subtle invitation. Check it out. Yeah, because obviously most of the emphasis is I've got to stop what I'm doing. Maybe you never did it. Yeah, maybe if you lost interest in being the doer, you would stop that shit. Probably would. Seriously. Yeah. And then you finally are on something that actually works. Yeah, it works. You get relief. And when you get the relief, you know you are of the relief. Yeah. So you're not living out in, it's like a, you ever read the prodigal son in the New Testament? The story Jesus put, I'm hoping I'm doing justice with it. The person left his situation, pretty nice situation, rich father, a nice place and flips out, you know, fuck this and gets <laughs> loaded and ends up hitting bottoms like an addict would and ends up in a pigsty and he's wrestling some pigs to get some a cob of corn, yeah? And he every time he goes, when he finds himself in these places, he thinks about his father and his old life, but he feels too guilty as if he did all this shit. So he refuses to open up to that possibility. Finally, he's had enough. He's in the pigsty, it just breaks. And then there's no bridge story. He's immediately on the road meeting his father. His father's giving a nice pair of you know, in this case, a robe, puts a beautiful ring on it, says, hey, we're having a big feast. There's no bridge story. It isn't like I was in the prodigals, I was in the pigsty, and then I retraced my steps. 
and I changed my life. Not to win. No. It was the pigsty had no importance whatsoever. Immediately, he's on the road meeting the father. Father gives him a beautiful ring, gives him a new pair of stones. Let's go. Let's eat. Don't, don't give me your story. Let's just go. Oh, but I fucked up. No, fuck it. Here. Immediately. Whip right there. No bridge story. No chapter. Just immediately. Like nothing ever happened. As soon as the guy reached the point where he stopped believing his own shit, which wasn't his shit to begin with, when he got to a point where he stopped believing this shit, it was right, readily available, as it had always been. But this point, he responded. There was no big chapter of how we got to be okay. It was just, bam, yeah. That's, how, that's, the, that's the immediacy of this message. It's already here. You don't see it coming. You are it. You are it. There's no time involved. There's no doing. There's nothing essentially that's not there. You don't play an essential role other than being it, which is the complete essentiality of it. Ah. So yes, do what you need to do. It's not you anyway. And hopefully when you get the relief, you know, you'll recognize the fucking neighborhood. And you've never moved from it, ever. You don't have to pay tolls to get back. That's, you're a citizen of that. As Jesus says, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. Yeah? What is the of? Find out. When you come into a moment, it's got the same base of every other moment you've ever come into. If you came into it through a hot tub or a good massage or meditating or sex or whatever, it's always the same moment, basically. It may have different qualities of love or whatever, but it's the same thing. You've never left, ever. Yeah. But, you know. So, yeah, that's my suggestion. But see, when someone talks and says they're outmatched, okay, great. That's a good diagnosis. Here's a pail of water. But you're not going to get addicted to the pail of water. The pe now is good. And then you're going to realize where you want to get brought back to. You've never left sooner or later. You're going to realize it. Hopefully, satsang will speed it up. I do. I mean, hopefully. Hopefully, satsang will speed it up that you'll recognize it clearer and it will gain some fucking roots. So every time your head says you've gone, you won't be believing it as much, yes? And then after a while, you won't believe it at all. And you see, yeah, the head goes all day, but I don't, yeah? That's a different ball game. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not in any condition. It's nothing to do with me, but I'm not calling anybody out. I'm not calling anybody up and saying I'm fucked because I'm not. I'm not calling them up. I get tons of calls from people. I do. There's nothing right or wrong with it, but I don't call people. I would if I was fucked up, but what comes goes. Yeah. That's a, sometimes that's the measuring thing I give them. I say, well, I'm not calling you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Am I? No. Well, there you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe something's working. Yeah. That's all I'm doing is re -engine It's like reverse engineering. You know the problem from the relief. If you get a taste of the relief, I'm telling you, you're a citizen of it. It's not foreign. It's not an exotic land. You are there now. It's just this activity keeps... It's like the attention and interest is drawn to particulars, it's like if there was a chalkboard like this TV, I bet you if you put a dot on it, your attention would go to that dot. And when you would go to the dot, you, you'd lose the sense of the space of the TV, yeah? You would just go to that point. This is the head, the mental state. The mental state will, at the expense of the space, will go to the point every fucking time. And the thing is, when you, it goes to the point, the head says, you went to the point, and that's the lie. The head went to the point, you are the space. Yes? You don't shrink down to that point. Your interest and attention may, but you don't. 
This is fundamentally, but what's implied is that you do, isn't it? Because every tail put on any activity by the mental state has a you in it. You did it. You, you're the one that focused on the dot. No, you weren't. There was a focusing on the dot. No, you focused on the dot. And then you had, you shouldn't have focused on that. And then it goes off. You know what I mean? Like as it has choice. It's not you. And it's not like it, 2023, January 21st, it became not you. It's never been you. It's not a you that became too much of a you and then now is reversing into a not you. There's no you. That's the freedom. The freedom is there's no weight that needs to be redistributed. None. Just see it. And you can either see it by having your head smashed on a wall 80 times. I don't recommend it, but if it works, it works. Or you can hear a satsang and do it the easiest off the way. But you, it's going to happen. Life's going to keep bringing you back for, to where you never left. It's love, really. What else would do that? But love. Love just demands itself from us. And it's just, you know, just keep... All right. Yes, you got out of it once again. But it just feels like uh, the same place I always arrive at when I get out of all these different things. Yes, because you never left that place. <laughs> so, and by losing interest starts the whole thing. Yeah. And the head can't lose interest in itself. It's got to be from somewhere else. You've got to see it as not you. And then there's a loss of interest. And what will fill you in, what will bring about a change in knowledge and everything will be that freed interest and attention because it will go somewhere that it's not directed by the head. It will go where it's going to go and bring back the messages it wants to bring back. Yes? And then it will be revelatory to you. You're not sending it on a chore or on a mission. It's free ranging and then downloading back. And all I see is a constant re reaffirmation of that does that does not need to be affirmed, really. It's a constant re reaffirmation of it, constantly. I heard this thing for a long time ago, and there's been there's never been a new song for 20, 30 years now. It was the last answer and is the last answer in the topic of spirituality in this life. It just put an end to it. And most answers never put an end. They just lead to another need for another answer. This was like a finally the dead end and there was like a huge panoramic was available. Yeah, the road was over. Get out of the vehicle. It's not needed. Yeah. Yeah. I go to thrift stores because it keeps me humble and simple. Instead of buying $1,200, I used to have people take me out. They were going to buy me $500 shirts. I said, fuck no. Now they get buy me a $4 shirt. Much more manageable. I like it a lot better. Seriously, I'd have people do that. I said, no, nah, you'll regret it in a few months. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Let's just go to thrift stores. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like everything that's recycled. This message is recycled, isn't it? Over and over and over again. You've always been wearing the same clothes. Yeah, it's always the same message, really. Nothing's ever changed on this level. That's the beauty of it. The beauty of it, this message has nothing to do with you. So anyone here, anyone here has a question? Yes, no? Anyone here? The Zoom? Anybody want to raise your hands? What happened? Did I disappear from the Zoom thing before? I started shrinking down. It was just your head and then your hand would pop up every once in a while. And I thought I, <laughs> and I figured Mary could help me out since nobody else usually does. We were, she, we were drinking. We were having an underwater meeting in the pool <laughs> over here at Mary's. I figured maybe it will, in the medium of water, it may get through quicker. We're gonna, we're trying everything. This next meeting is gonna be at the pool. Take a breath. Hopefully you got two minutes to get it. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Any... Esther, ha Esther, hi, Esther. She has her hand up. Oh, Esther. All right. So we're going to have questions from you. They should, you'll be able to hear them. Yes, Esther. Um, the last thing that you said, uh, I can't repeat it, but I'm going to listen to it again because um, this, the message today was just awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes. But right. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, I like this one point about the relief thing, because there is relief as an opposite of something else, but non-duality is a negation of that relief as not being real, to tell you the truth. That's why the story of the necklace and the lady, she believed she lost the necklace, but she didn't lose the necklace. And then she believed she found the necklace when she came upon it, but it had never left. So the same thing when we get relief, yeah, we're not paying it, to, maybe we are, but if you pay attention to the state of the relief, you'll see the familiarity that there is because you've never actually left that place. There was a belief we did and that place negated the belief. Yeah, and so you can help the seeing of that through an understanding, through satsang. So now when you get relief, doesn't mean don't get that pail of water, use the pail of water, but when the whole fire goes out, check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then because that relief that isn't an opposite from the bondage, you'll be, you'll kick that addiction. There'll be that addiction of relief, bondage, bondage, relief. Yeah, there's a relief before it. Yeah, that can be your daily modus, modus operandi, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Esther. So I just, yeah, it's, um, uh, you can go into it so much, really. This whole thing is fabricated with time. Time is one of the main ingredients of this whole thing. Because the head produces an idea that you're a you, right? That they, the, at the production point, there isn't a you. And then it takes time to produce this idea that there's a you. And then there's a presupposing of that idea before everything. So now the you that was made up by an activity thinks it's the doer of the activity. It's freaking insane. Yeah. And this is not for people. If you're just chilled, that's awesome. But for the people that see it, because it's going to happen, knowing it or not, because it's mechanical. The head has a working apparatus, you know, apparatus and it it claims whatever it's brought into contact with so we we are a carrier let's say of consciousness and we bring things into contact with consciousness and the mental state arises and claims what's ever brought into contact and writes a story about it with it as the star which is that you're the doer or you're the one who's conscious or this and that and it's if you waste time trying to correct it, I think it's a waste of time. You just see it as not you. If you keep calling it you, then you think you've got to have some, you have to do something. That's the same old, same old slavery, really. Yes? Your reaction is, I'm going to have to do something to undo this. That's another form of slavery. This is just seeing it and seeing it as not you, and it loses its gloss. It loses its adhesive quality. It loses its reflective surface. You're not getting a picture of you from it anymore. And there's a loss of interest in it. Yeah? It's not like getting a new set of mirrors or smaller mirrors. You lose interest in the reflection the mental state is looking for all the time. Yes? Yeah. For me, I start to see the destructiveness of it. Hold on, I'm going to move. So, Esther, I'm sorry I just jumped over you, maybe, but it's just happening today. Here you go. I was just going to say, from from my point of view, it, start, it was starting to become apparent how destructive the cycle was of going out and coming back and seeing, getting caught in the loop of belief that something's actually happening that you're responsible for. 
and you see how destructive it is and how it's the and then you also see that it's not real it becomes quite apparent but but the beauty also it tells you of the reality of the activity of dreaming exactly don't you get that that yes you have things that seem so real and are not there must be something engaged with it, which is our streaming mm -hmm. and giving it all the meaning it has. So if you want to read the Course in Miracles and you really want it to be a living thing, it has to be applied to the activity that comprises your day. And so that's would be a damn good definition of dreaming. You and I give everything all the meaning it has. If the things that we're giving meaning to had a meeting, they could override our meeting, but they're empty. So this is dreaming. Absolutely. And we are the dreaming, which is pretty uh, incredible position to be in, but it's not a position, it's an activity. There's no one doing it, but it's dreaming. Yes. And that's what I get out of things. I see the description of what's happening through what happens. So when you say that happening, I see that's a beautiful example of dreaming, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Course would say, uh, it, it, yeah. it uses two absolutes. Should yeah, it, uh, it, it uses two absolutes in that same sentence. It says, you and I give everything all the meaning it has. So everything and all are pretty absolutes, yeah. So you and I give everything all the mean and all it mean anything all the meaning it has that's like you're it <laughs> as the dreaming you are the dreaming and most people think i'm in a dream or something but you are the dreaming itself which blows my mind because that's such a present tense activity there's no place to observe it really so you just feel it you're not observing it anymore you're feeling it yeah wow so and that's to me, I think the living aspect of a living book is given to it. The living is given to it by us as the readers or the hearers. Yeah. That's why someone the other day said, oh, the last few months, the satsangs have been super clear. I said, no, they haven't. You've gotten clearer, so to speak. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the satsangs. Your ears are hearing it, you know, more, let's say. Yeah. Because <laughs> it isn't based on. The, the quality is all basically found by us. Yeah, there's no, there is an inherent quality, but you know what I mean? It's the, what it's going to mean is the hearing of it. Yeah, 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 it's cool. A lot of times I'm appreciated like three years later. <laughs> People get in touch with me three years later. Oh, I got it. I get it now. So cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a lonely place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Esther, I'm sorry I jumped over you. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say that um, the the it's just like all right, so for example, last night, uh, often part of not sleeping, the experience is um, like feeling more mortal, just really uncomfortable in the physical. And the awareness came that um, it's a sensation, uh, the thinking about it uh, implies the thinker, but I'm not that. And uh, that I can still go to sleep experiencing whatever it is. And I fell asleep. Great. And so, and then for, for, um, like, late, lately I've been experiencing a lot of tiredness and, um, a lot of activity had to be done. My mother had all kinds of issues that had to be attended to medically. And um, I got to the place where uh, it, it didn't matter. Uh, like whatever the experiencing was, um, 
like it didn't have it didn't have any meaning whereas yeah. before before there would be uh yes some kind of projection of blame and and uh what happened also was a I was trying to get help with the my, with my room and the lady asked me what is this um piece of furniture what's in it and the activity came at sleep time why did I tell her what's in it but then and the victimization was so intense uh and the blame and I realized that that was activity um so stuff like that Wait. Yeah, I have a new practice, it's Dr. Insomnia. We work this, the videos work with people who have insomnia. I wasn't actually, wasn't expecting that, but it's a, a good cure to, for people with insomnia. They put me on and they go to sleep immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this over and over years. The last thing I would have thought, you know, oh, it's sort of, but they go to sleep. <laughs> but hey, it's awesome, man. You don't know how valuable sleep is unless you don't have any. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep is such a nice little vacation. Yeah. Because usually the body barks a lot. As you get older, the body condition uh, barks. So it's nice like in the morning when we wake up, I usually wake up before Amelia and I'm just laying there and I'm seemingly in the room and everything in the body, but the body is embarking, you know? And it can just go into a nice trance, very nice. So, yeah, yeah. But that's great, Esther. I'm happy the message is working. That's all. Just get out, you know, just keeps happening. Yeah, yeah. You can, in here, in this place, uh, it can look like a, a long-term traveling lighter, which I don't, I think is what more do you want, really? If you're destined to travel through time and space through an experiential event that has a lot of limitations, like the body experience, then traveling lighter is a damn good deal, really good deal. So sometimes we have the target way too high. It would just be dog shit awareness could be incredibly valuable. And this is what it is really. When you get relief, uh, it's not a return. There was an imagined uh, uh, going, that's all. The relief constantly reasserts on having never left. It does. If, that, if you have the ears to hear it that way, it has a very incredible impact because the believing of the head is what triggered all that uh, consumerism con con concerning getting into the moment. There is a belief, a lot of people believe that it can be out of the moment because they believe their head seems to be out of the moment and they're identified, as Fred was saying, with the head. So when the head is out of the moment, it, they believe it's I'm out of the moment. There's a huge distinction. The head is constantly out of the moment. It can never leave the moment, but it's constantly out of it, past and future. But that doesn't imply it's you. You're never out of any moment. See, the distinction is it seems simple, but it's super profound because the head is firing like flares and we keep going think, and then we report from the flare, but we're reporting from here. We never leave. Oh, I'm really disconnected. I, uh, you know, you're not, you're here. You are never not here. And it's gonna dawn on you. It dawns on you the moment when the relief is found again. It does. It's forgotten the next moment, but it dawns. There is a moment where it's super clear, but in time it can become unclear, the head. But that moment is going to leave a fucking tattoo. It's going to leave a mark. And after a while, there's, it's going to become obvious on having never left. It is. Yeah. And a lot of the fear is that you've left somewhere and you can't get back. You've done something that's not undoable and it's totally, it's imaginary, completely imaginary. And people hear some of the people like the Course of Miracles, isn't that the statement of the Course? 
nothing ever happened. <laughs> this is like a thought mind, big M mind had for like maybe a, a nanosecond, and now it's in a time loop. The mind of God is in its ever-present absoluteness, and this is it's not even fucking picking up any radio signals from this. You know, does it say that in the course? Yeah. What did these things imply? I don't care about the saying. The saying triggers something. It triggers something. You have recollections of home. It triggers it. I, when I heard this, I knew it before I heard it. I knew it. It was knowledge before the knowledge of this world. I just knew it. It was like an unspoken yes. It was just like a fucking, you know, I had heard enough satsang and it, it, that point was just sticking out. Yeah. So it, it's, it's that which the message implies is really the message. It's a sense feltness. That's like an anchor here. It allows you to have an anchor where before you were unmoored and just fucking getting batted by all your mental activities. You're not, you're not moved as much. And if you are moved, there's no pride. You deal with it exactly how you have to deal with it and it's over. And then when you arrive on having never left, yes? If I had trouble, I would fucking do something. If I was outmatched, I don't have any biological kids. I haven't, don't, I can't, I don't have an intimacy with that experience. But if I did, I would fucking have to get help if I needed to make it through it until there was something else that was revealed. Yeah. I wouldn't, I hopefully wouldn't use a philosophy as a way of denying what I need to do now by thinking there is no Paul to have to do it. No, fucking. I'm not here to save my fucking non-dual face. If my ass needed help, I would ask for it. I, I asked for help with the truck I have immediately. I don't think, oh, I can't ask for help. I should know what to do. I don't know what to do with the fucking truck. Call someone up. Hey, can you help me? No. Okay. So then I have to wait till someone to come and help me. Yeah. What about this? So. Anyone else, Mike? Yes. Uh, yeah. Bruce is next. Bruce is next. Oh, Bruce. All right, Bruce. Yes. This uh, is uh, yeah, hi. You may have to get one of these because the volume is so much better than the iPad. All right. Yeah, kind of a brief report. Yep. After our, after our little talk. Yeah, I had been experiencing, well, there was a feeling of, uh, separation, like a grieving loss of a relationship, the feeling of loss of a relationship. And yeah, uh, asking for help, getting some pails of water. And then uh, after all this, you know, the conversation last night, uh, God almighty, I had this feeling, you know, as like Jesus again in the desert, it was like, you know, is there any way you can take this cup of feeling alone away, yet thy will be done. And of course, you know, the feeling uh, of aloneness. But then all of a sudden, I, f I felt if this is the feeling that the sun has of, you know, the only one, and, and it's not like, doesn't appear to be connected with anything outside of itself. And then uh, watching from like the satellite view, you know, of all the beauty on the planet, you know, from a satellite point of view, and as it revolves, you get to see all the dimensions. And and then it just, it came to me, you know, it's everything is sunlight. All this sunlight is, is reflecting back at me from everything and the beauty just went bam. And uh, so, and you know, I'm sunlight too. So there is no, separation anyway that's my report yeah and you may need to call somebody tomorrow <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> yeah. Exactly. and yes yes they're not incongruent they're not opposed yes yes 
They're not opposed. There's not one's not a debit and one's a credit. It's not. Yeah. It just that's how we see it, but it's not that way. Great, Bruce. I'm happy that you're feeling a a little ray of light. A little, <laughs> a little ray of sunshine. That's good. Yes. We could all use a more a little ray of sunshine. Thank you, Bruce. Anyone else? Yes, John Luna. Oh, John Luna. Hey, what's up, Paul? How are you doing? Homeboy. Good, good. <laughs> I said you're a homeboy from the Bronx. You get five extra minutes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, don't get much at all. <laughs> so, uh, ready. why do they have to complain about? Look at this place. Uh, okay. Palm Springs, now, man. I wish, let me tell you, I wish I was in Palm Springs. Even the right birds are <laughs> a giant, huge, citru huge citrus in a tree. I don't know what they are. Huge grapefruits or something. Jesus Christ. I, I remember. The are dying for us grapefruit. Yeah. All right. I remember being in Palm Springs and the jasmine, the smell of the jasmine. The jasmine, yes. Yeah, no place. Um, Exquisite setting. We have this, these mountains. Yeah, let me give you a shot, John. Can you see it? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god well let's get down to real business holy <laughs> shit <laughs> wow you got the vitamin d out there man let me tell you <laughs> pretty nice eh? yeah, yeah it's beautiful you know. yeah so you know last uh meeting yeah. it was amelia yes the beauty amongst the beauty Very yeah cool. exactly yeah. <laughs> um you know you're always pointing us uh, to take that backward step, which is great. And um, you know, I, I realized I had a, I had a, a, I think a very good realization for myself because it, you know, um, when I had like my initial awakening, I, I was using a lot of, uh, <laughs> and I don't mean to be glib at all, but I was, you know, using amphetamines. And uh, I was, I, that would have must have sped up your realization. Well, it, it made me a great meditator in the beginning. <laughs> you know, and, I'm uh, with the common folk now. Go ahead. You know, yeah, and but I just always sort of kept this feeling that being who we are, being what we are, like required a a, a certain vitality. And um, I don't know after that meeting, and then I. I've just been having a little bit of, uh, you know, issues with uh, my health, and because uh, I messed up my nervous system from all that, and uh, I, um, so yeah, I don't recommend it for anybody. But um, I realize uh, this being being what we are requires no energy. It requires the least amount of energy in any. Well, it, it, I mean, I could say the least amount, but there's no energy. It's like I mean, I've heard another teacher say, like, your fist is closed, and it's so used to being closed that it doesn't remember what it's like to be open. And now I had this feeling like I've been chasing vitality, chasing vitality like that. I had to have the vitality to have the presence. And I just had this feeling, oh, wait a second. You know, it was yeah. so deep-seated and subconscious, and it was, wait a second, no, no, no. Like this is before vitality. This is before. Like it's it's it requires no vitality. We can vouch for that. Right. For that. It was it was it's definitely before vitality. Yeah, it's getting you, drained out of us every second. So. <laughs> and it just feels like what a freeing feeling. Like I could feel this is here with no effort. It's not an effort. It's not. Any, it's an effort to deny it. That's what it is. Yeah, but we, you know, it, but it, the mind turns it around and says, "No, it's an effort to find it." <laughs> of course, it does. That's it. You yeah. were in the Zara world. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable. But you know, you see it yeah, at different levels. Road. You know, and I've seen it at different levels. But there's oh, yeah. you know, there's other levels that are like when each person talks. I, I hear like everybody has their own particular thing that they get caught on you know what i mean and and, and sometimes it's you got to go through you know whatever there's different you know you get to that thing finally you did enough times you hear the message yes. 
it, it, it lands in a deep, even deeper in a place where you couldn't see before. Yeah. So after the talk on Wednesday, something landed in a place that I had never been able to see before, which is really, really good. And I just wanted to thank you for that. Great. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, you chasing seeing, vitality makes you tired. You were seeing something. You didn't see it, though. But yeah. That's nice. Eh? Yes. And vitality is good. No, vitality is great, but chasing it yeah. makes you tired. <laughs> I could only play three holes of golf here. Yeah. I used to play 12. I longed for the day. You seriously only three? No, I know. I don't play, <laughs> never play golf. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I used to play a stick you. ball. Stick ball and, and a, yeah, and, and no surfing. <laughs> Just this handball course and, and uh, surfing in Long Beach. Yeah, surfing in Long Beach. Yes. Yeah. Mm. All right, uh, thank you, John. I'm such you. a happy to see you. And uh, yes. yeah, man, I really appreciate it, man. You you're doing doing so much help for all of us. Thank you. Yes, yeah, we'll see how much it matters to these people when we pass the donation basket. We'll see. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, as they say. No. All right, hold on. Keep going. I want to move over to here a second. This is good. This is a mobile. Come in. Tim, you sit here. I'll sit here. We get Stacy and both you here. All right. Here's two of our best friends here. Says Stacy. You remember her from Italy? <laughs> There's Tim. How's it going? Nice to see him. So yeah. Mike. All right. Okay. Who's next? Uh, Danny. There's Boston, David. Yeah. There's David. Mike, say hello to David. Hey, David. <laughs> hey. Nice to see you, man. Yeah. Mike. Oh, Mike. Mike. Yes, Mike. All right. Who? Oh, I hurt my foot there. Danny in California. Danny in California. Then we're going to end soon. These people, I think. They're losing interest immediately. It's always a projection, really. <laughs> Just want to get a coffee. So. All right, go ahead. Serve, serve coffee during the meeting. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> now I want, you know, I'm a snob. Yes. I don't trust Canadians to bring good coffee. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. But go ahead. Paul, good to see you. Thank you for your time. I was just wondering. Um, so I have been experiencing for the past 13 months, extreme long COVID by that, I mean, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, not depression. I'm very good in the head. Some people say, Oh, take a nap, take a shower, go for a walk, eat better. It's very debilitating. Sometimes I can't get out of the house for three or four days, even to shower. Um, and I usually shower twice a day. With that comes brain fog and body vibrations. And, um, you know, they say you make plans and God laughs at you. I enrolled in my master's program and I got really sick and had to defer. And just for the past 13 months, I've been doing the best I can, accepting that obviously this is not me. I, as an individual, as the light, as the energy, the awareness I am a healthy being. I'm experiencing an unhealthy state right now. But at times, I feel, is it ever going to go away? And when I attempt to push myself, which is the worst thing you should do for chronic fatigue syndrome, it gets worse. And the way I've been interpreting it and dealing with it is accepting it, even though I don't like it. Mm -hmm. and knowing that this is something that's going on with my health, not me as an individual. Yeah. yeah. And I was just curious what your take would be on the health aspect. Well, I don't have an intimate experience of what you're going through. So, uh, uh, I think sometimes you just admit you can't accept what needs to be accepted. Yeah. So you just, uh, you just admit you're overwhelmed. 
and leave it at that and see what shows up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully. And then, you know, the head likes to dwell on when you're ill, try to have ways to uh, distract your head, be it service or whatever, just so that, uh, because when you are saying there's no shit and the flies aren't moving, they're not buying it. So you just got to distract yourself. Yes. Do something. You can probably do some service on the phone. You know, take a couple hours where people who are having trouble out in the streets, they can call you and you pick up the phone and you tell them what meetings are available, stuff like that. So put your, you know, put yourself to use the way you can and realize it's a frustrated thing because the head believes it can change shit. And it's a lot of times it's confronted with its powerlessness and it doesn't do well with that. So you just, when you admit that you're powerless, uh, you know, there's a newfound power comes. Yeah. So I've had a lot of chronic problems in my life and, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time alone in a hospital bed where, and situations happened that broke me. And I didn't think I could be broken anymore. And life broke me a lot more th than I thought I could go. And, uh, you know, there was no option there. I was awake and I was awake to a lot of pain and discomfort, but I was awake and my head would say no mass and more shit would happen. So it just got to a point where uh, surrender was the only possibility. Just say, hey, fuck, you know? I mean, I, can't, I couldn't turn the channel. Right. I couldn't lower the volume because I didn't have TV. They didn't have good TV at the hospital then and I couldn't move. You know, I was just power. I was pretty much in one position for two, you know, two, three straight months. So, yeah. But I know, you know, I'll tell you something that I saw, which was amazing. Uh, my mother, uh, at a certain age, she had to go into a, se a senior citizen's home, a nursing home, because she was uh, disabled. And I would go visit her and she'd always ask me to bring a beer, which I never would because she liked the beer. But And uh, so I would see her. They bring her out of the room in a wheelchair. And this one day they brought her out and she was so beautiful. Her whole face was lit up and she had just gotten over doing a service, calling up people that were stay-ins that didn't live in a nursing home or a disability place. Mm -hmm but they never get out. Sure and is. she would, she had a phone tree that she would call and see how they were. And that service brought the light out and sent her head somewhere else. It was so beautiful. It made a, prof it was a very profound moment because I, I truly believe in service as a great antidote to the immediate situations. So, and, uh, there's ample opportunity to do service. It'll distract your head. And there's another famous story. My One of my sponsors, his name was Sai P. He, his garage went on fire. Like there was a gas can that just blew up and he ended up with 70% third degree uh, burns on his body. And he was in the hospital in San Francisco and he was in incredible pain. And, uh, this nurse, the nurse came in and said, hey, listen, Sai, would you like to talk to this kid? He, I think he's an addict. And Sai felt like the nurse was imposing on him. He says, can't you see I'm in all this pain? But he, he gave up because of AA and he let the person in. And after about two hours, when the person left, he realized he hadn't felt the pain in two hours. So he told the nurse, get every fucking addict and alcoholic you can find and bring them to the room. Right. Yeah, because that service had sent his head around the corner and he got some relief. So that way. So I don't I'm not a real believer in a lot of mental gymnastics. Sometimes right. you just got to admit that you're fucked. You know? yeah. yeah, I'm powerless over it and I accept it. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Yeah. And there's going to there's value in it. There will always be. If you make it through, everything turns very valuable. A lot of patience. 
Yeah, it does. Everything is valuable, seriously. Every illness, everything. If you make it through and you stay physically alive, there's huge value in it all. You learn a lot. I learned a lot in that hospital bed. I learned uh, loneliness went pretty fucking far. And a lot of these things that I had just had touched the surface called impositions and pain in life. I was in the deep end of the pool. Uh, uh, you know, inevitably something happens, you're brought to the light. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel val there's value in everything. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else have anything to say? Yeah. No. Any Anyone there, Mike? I just want to repeat what you said because it's a nice counter to that, that phrase. If, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. So, uh, yeah. but that, you know, that you-ness is like, like I should be stronger as opposed to what you just said, every, making it through, everything is valuable. Everything else, not you. <laughs> I like that. Exactly. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, if you want to call it love or whatever, in a weird, in a way, love is just demanding itself from us. It's, yeah. For the best of us. To me, that's true true compassion and I would have loved to avoid it a lot of shit but I probably needed to go through it to a point to see something that I wasn't seeing easily yeah so I mean maybe I didn't you know I learned a lot of empathy for people laying in a hospital bed I did did and I remember a day when they released me after a couple of months I was in a wheelchair but my my sister made a deal because I knew I wasn't going to get well in the hospital. I had to get out of there. It was not a good place. So she set up the requirements for me to go to a house, like get a hospital bed and have my own room and promise to get me to the hospital, drive me up there. So I was getting released and they brought me down into the lobby and it was a very busy place. And there was an older guy at that point to me, I was young, and his head was lolling off the gurney and no one was paying any attention to him. He's just laying there and there's people moving all around. And I was getting in the car, they was putting my head in and I looked through the window, it was a huge window. And I looked at, and I had eye contact with this dude, this older guy, and I could just see everything in there. And he saw me and then the door was closed and I took off, but I made a huge impact, huge, incredible. And, uh, you know, this, there's a lot of rich sadness in life to me because you see, no matter how it may look, it isn't that way. It's so beautiful, really. So a lot of times when people seemingly wake up and then it gets weird, like months later, maybe, and then they would call me up and stuff and I would just say, just don't act out and don't die and it's going to get great. You know, and acting out to me was drinking or using. Just don't act out, don't die, and it's just going to get great. And it is, because there's a, it just is. So, so yeah, bro. And you have a lot to share with people that may be going through similar things. And so you'll have value there. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. All right. Anyone else, Mike? No, just, no hands. Uh, there's a lovely a lady from Maryland, uh, no Maryland. from New Jersey. They try to tell me she was from New York, but <laughs> you got somebody from New York in Palm Springs? No, she's from New Jersey, really. Or well, New funny. Jersey. <laughs> We're yeah. gonna make her an honor, an honorary New Yorker. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So here's everyone. It's a lovely place. And uh I want to thank you guys today. Hey, there's hey, Kate hey, from hey, hmm? There's a bunch of us that have something to say to you. Oh, guess what it's going to be. <laughs> Open right. your mics, everybody. <laughs> One, two, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That was a slow one. <laughs>
I'm, I'm truly <laughs> touched. slower. <laughs> Love you, Paul. I'm truly touched, yes. Hi, Mary. Hi. <laughs> All right, let me say goodbye to everyone here then. Kerry, thank you for being our friend. and Yes, Paul. Happy us, birthday. All this time. Yes, thank you very much. I don't see the other person. It's too dark there. I don't know. All right, we're going to go to only it's ones we names. recognize. Well, Matt Julian is probably the dark one. I don't have any uh, names. Any names. Matt. The names. Oh, you go on there. Hold on a second. Oh, on here. Oh, there you go. Now oh, you news the mouse. All right, so we got Carrie. We got Mac J. Nice to see you, Matt. Hey, Paul. Oh, Happy birthday, bro. The Italian contingent. They all <laughs> leaving because the food has been released. Uh, <laughs> mm, yeah. Yes. Nice to see you, Asta. Thank you for your share. What, Esther, your hair's color changed. Oh, it's your mom. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to see you. All right, you got to keep Bruce, as always. Emerson in Long Beach. Uh, we got Betty. Nice to see you, Betty. Kaylin from Romania. Yes, Kaylin. Yes. With the lovely daughter, G Jean T, Jean Tucker, Alan, a close friend of Esther, <laughs> Rich A. Nice to see you, Rich, on a Saturday. Johannes, hey, happy birthday! Thank you, thank you. Who? I don't know. Uh, we don't who knows. I think this is uh, I don't know who that is, but thank you. We got Tyler in the woods in Mendocino. There he is. Thank you. We'll be home tomorrow. Angie. The Happy amazing birthday, <laughs> Nice to see you. <laughs> what did you say? Happy birthday, timeless one. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go. Yes, I'm timeless ageless. One. I'm ageless. Zo oh Zoe, nice to see you, Zoe. Oh, we've got, let's see, Shannon. Shannon, are you, uh, we just what? lost Shannon. Wow. No, she's Esteban. there. Esteban. She's still there. Oh, is she? She yeah. disappeared in our right. thing. Yeah. She went somewhere else. Oh, here you are. You ran away, Shannon. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> we got Emerson. Esteban. There he is. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, bro. Uh, we got John Luna. Oh, there's Marty. Marty made an appearance. He's using a surname. He's someone else. All right. Special That's birthday okay. greeting. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I needed that. We got Nick. We got John C. John Connolly. John S. Nice to see you guys. Thank you for uh, showing up on the birthday. How do we get to the next page? I have no idea. This is an. This there's is an. An there's an arrow on the right side of the page yeah. if you hover over there. Right here. Voila. All right. Thank you. People. All right. We've got uh, Tariq, my main man from Dover. Chris. Oh, let's hit him. Yeah. I think you have to use the mouse. Oh, the mouse. Hold on. Oh, there we yeah. go. Moni. Nice to see you, Moni. We got Tariq. We got Chris from Mammoth Lakes. Thanks for the happy birthday, Chris. I haven't seen it. Hope all's no. well there. No, yeah. Justin. Nice to see you, Chris. Yeah, Justin from New York. Nice to see you. Jerry. Jack. I guess it's Jack from Cape Cod. Chris. Oh, there's Roman. Roman in the radiator. Happy birthday, Paul. Oh, you know, yes, thank you, Roman. I'm happy to hear it from you. Miranda. Nice to see you. Another day of sobriety. Hallelujah. Fantastic. Very, very nice. Natalie. Natalie, uh, keep your eye on the road there, Natalie. Yes, I am. It's my first time here. It was great. I loved it. Oh, great, Natalie. I hope I see you again. All right. You will. Yeah. All right. Take care. Happy birthday. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that's it. Where else? How else we go? See the arrow over here? But we want to go back maybe on this way. Yeah. Hold on. Just making sure. All right. Yeah, I think we said said hello to everyone. Thank you, everybody. Let's see if this is Shannon. Yeah. 
Hey, have a great day. Matt Julian, nice to see you from yeah. London, England somewhere. Nice to see you. Take Good care, Kerry. We're going right, to go uh, search for another coffee. See you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Amelia. Bye. Bye.